Let's talk about triangular distributions. The triangular distribution is one of the most commonly used statistical distributions within project management when it comes to conducting Monte Carlo simulations. So if we want to implement this in Excel, we need to know two different things. First of all, how do we plot the triangular distribution and how do we draw random numbers from this statistical distribution? Let's take a look at what the literature has to say. Let me read to you from this book from the subsection titled Triangular Distribution, and I quote, As you can see, there is no way to do it with native Excel, at least not without a macro. However, it is easy with at risk. Now that is a bit strange for two reasons. First of all, I have done this numerous times in the vanilla Excel using only the native worksheet functions. It is not that difficult. And second of all, the book makes it sound like it is very difficult to make these macros or these subroutines. It's not. It's actually pretty simple. I'm going to show you how. And third of all, it sounds to me that this book is just wanting to sell more of this very expensive uh, add-in that uh, you get the trial version with the book. But um, that's more of a conspiracy theory, I suppose. But before we jump over to Excel, uh, let me just recap the theory really fast. This is a statistical distribution and it's a triangular distribution. It's called triangular because it looks like a triangle, okay? And it has three input parameters which are needed in order to define it. It needs a parameter which we can call A, which represents the lowest possible value the X variable can take. We have a parameter B, which is the highest possible value. And then we have something called C, which represents the most likely. Now this book keeps calling that most likely, but what this really means is that it's a mold of the statistical distribution. To get the equations for the PDF and CDF of the triangle distribution and the procedure for drawing random numbers from it, we can just go to Wikipedia. All the information is provided there. So now that we have an understanding of the theory, we can now jump over to Excel. As an example, I've just chosen some random parameters. The minimum value is set to zero. The most likely value, which represents the mode of the distribution, is set to 20. And the highest value is 100. So on the left hand side here we have column A, which is just the different values that the uh, distributions can undertake. So from 0 all the way to 100. And in column B I have calculated the probability density function. And as you can see in the plot there, we have drawn it perfectly. So clearly this is possible to do in Excel using worksheet functions. But how exactly did I do it? Let's take a look at the random cell here and click F2 and here it is. Very parsimonious and straightforward and quite simple, right? If you want a clearer view of what's going on, let us assume that we want to type in the function in cell B10. Now here is the function that we got from Wikipedia for the probability density function of uh, the triangle distribution. Here is the parameters that we stored in the Excel spreadsheet. And finally, here we have the actual function typed into cell B10. Now, in order to do this, uh, we need to be able to use if functions. And the problem with the if functions in the worksheet uh, is that it's uh, only binary. There can only be two outcomes. One particular outcome if, we have, uh, if the condition is true, and another outcome if the condition is false. But we have one, two, three, four, five different functions or equations that we want to choose from. So in order to do that, we need to nest several if functions inside of each other. Okay, so you can draw the probability density function of a triangle distribution using the worksheet functions, but it's not very convenient. It is a lot better to just use the subroutines or the macros in VBA. If you are in the worksheet, you can just hit Alt F11 in order to open up the VBA editor. Once you are in the VBA editor, you can click on Insert and then on Module in order to open up a new module. And then you can just start typing in the code. I have taken the liberty of just typing in the code of the camera. As you can see, we have made a function in VBA, which is named triangular distribution underscore PDF. And it has one, two, three, four different input variables. First of all, we have the X variable. Then we have try min, which represents the A parameter, the lowest possible value that X can undertake. Then we have try mode, which is the C parameter, the most likely value or the mode. 
and then we have try max, which is a maximum value that x can undertake. And we also specify the data type of all of these four different input uh, variables. They are all double, which means that they can be decimal numbers. And the output of the function is also a double. In order to understand the rest of the code, you need to be familiar with if functions, which I'm not going to go into much detail. If we compare the output to the uh, equation we found on Wikipedia, the rest of the code should be rather self-explanatory. Similarly, we have the code for the CDF, for the cumulative distribution function of the triangular distribution. And once again, if we compare it to the equation from Wikipedia, and if we know how to use if then else functions in VBA, then the code should be rather self-explanatory. Back in the worksheet, we can now use these two different VBA functions that we defined in order to draw both the PDF and the CDF of the triangular distribution. And as you can see, the implementation is now rather straightforward. So in the cell here, for instance, we can just write triangular distribution underscore PDF and then provide the parameters. And similarly, for the CDF, we just use the underscore CDF version. And with this, we can draw both of these two. So that was how we can plot the triangle distribution, both this PDF and CDF. Let us now move over to generate pseudo random numbers from this particular distribution. And once again, we can go to Wikipedia to get the procedure or, or the relevant equations for how to do this. And in Excel or in VBA, to be more specific, we can very simply implement this set of equations, as you can see right here. Now that we have the code, if we want to generate a random number or a pseudo random number to be more specific, we can just go to the worksheet and type in the function and provide the parameters. And as you can see, I got 18.3569, which sounds pretty random to me. But the question is, can we really trust this code, this script that we just made? And the answer in general is no. It's very easy to get this wrong. I got this wrong several times while I was trying to type in the code while watching Netflix. So what you should do once you have made a, a, a script to generate random numbers, you should test it. You should uh, generate a large number of uh, these uh, uh, pseudo random numbers, and you should verify that they are coinciding with the statistical distribution that you have outlined. To do this efficiently, you should make a subroutine or macro in VBA which is what I just did here. We have a subroutine called Monte Carlo underscore triangular. Uh, we start by changing some of the uh, application settings. An application here just means Excel because we want to optimize for the execution speed. For instance, we are ter temporarily turning off the screen and we are turning calculations over to manual. By default, uh, Excel wants to recalculate every single cell once a change happens to any of the cell in the worksheet, but this slows down the execution speeds tremendously so you want to turn it off temporarily before we turn it over to automatic again in the end. In case we have some previous content where we want to output our random numbers, we want to delete it. So that's what's going on here. We are deleting or clearing the content of range AA, which just means column A. Uh, then I'm just outputting some strings into a cell C2 and C3. Uh, specifically, I'm stating time start and time finished. And then in D2, I output uh, what uh, time of day it is right now. And then I do the same thing in the end, and if I take the difference between these two, I will get the how much time it took to execute this script. Then I output another string here in cell A1, I just write random triangular. Then I define some parameters there. We have uh, n, which is the number of iterations in our Monte Carlo simulation, if you will, or how many random numbers I want to generate. And we're going to generate a million of that. Uh, then I just define the different uh, parameters needed for the triangle distribution. We have the try min, try mode, and try max. And then we do the actual loop. So we're using a for loop here. So for i equals 1 to n, which is specified as a million up here, what we're going to do in range a2, or relative to range a2, we are going to output uh, the output of the uh, function we made earlier. And uh, the best way to kind of learn what the script is doing is to just run it. So if you go back to the worksheet, uh, here we have the output. So in column A here, we get the um, random uh, or pseudo random numbers, 51.46, 38.19, all the way to we have generated a million of them. Here we have the time start and the time finish. So this script took uh, 30 seconds and I run it off camera. Uh, then I made some summary uh, statistics there and descriptive statistics. 
it's really important here to compare the output with the theoretical uh, parameters or theoretical uh, statistical moments to be more precise. So for instance, the empirical mean we got there, the mean of uh, these uh, million uh, pseudonymous is uh, 40.009. Theoretically speaking, the mean should be equal to 40, so that's pretty close. The standard deviation turned out to be 21.613, but it should be 21.6, so again, it's really close. Uh, similarly, uh, for the skewness, we get uh, 0 0.475 and should be 0 0.48. Uh, the skewness should be negative 0.6, and as you can see, again, it's pretty close. Uh, the minimum and the maximum is just specified parameters, and again, you see they are coinciding uh, pretty closely. Uh, and finally, we can make a histogram here, and indeed, it looks kind of like a triangle, with the uh, mode being uh, at the parameter uh, C, which we define to be 20. So based on the summary and the scripted statistic, it does seem that our script is uh, functioning as it should. It is indeed generating a pseudo-random number from the triangular distribution, and the output has the correct uh, statistical distribution. So that kind of uh, that's the end of this video. We now learned uh, two things basically: how to draw the PDF or probability density function, and the CDF, the cumulative distribution function, of the triangular distribution in Excel, in native Excel, that is. Uh, so according to the literature, this should be impossible without the use of expensive uh, third-party add-ins. But as we demonstrated, you can do it quite well on your own, both with worksheet functions and with VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. The second thing we did was to generate pseudo-random numbers. Uh, so now you can generate uh, seemingly random numbers from the triangle distribution, and you can use that for any kind of multicolor simulation. Uh, specifically, we use this a lot in project management.